Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Mark the Evangelist Catholic Church. According to our ancient tradition, the church does not celebrate Mass on Good Friday. Today, we gather together for the celebration of the Lord's Passion. There are three parts to this liturgy. The liturgy of the Word, the veneration of the cross, and Holy Communion. Good Friday is a day of prayerful contemplation on the mysteries of the cross. It is more than a day of mourning. It is a day of victory. The church wants us to see the purpose and effect of the cross, which is redemption and salvation. The apparent defeat is actually a victory, a victory that will be completed on Easter. The clergy will enter in silence and prostrate themselves in prayer. Please join them by kneeling during this time. Father Richard will then offer the opening prayer followed by the liturgy of the word. Please stand, everybody. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. For even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless for those who have not been told shall see, and those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of God been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot 
from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb to the slaughter or a sheep before shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evil doers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in the fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord.
they who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, My trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I come my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, 
God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, who is it you want? They answered him. Jesus Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Who is it you want? They said, Jesus Nazarene. Jesus answered, 
I told you I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas at first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who has counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to all who would listen. I've taught near the temple where the people come together. There was nothing secretive in what I said. I openly taught for all to hear. Question me, why question me? Question those who heard me when I spoke. Why question me? Why question me? Question those who heard me, they know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testified to the wrong, 
But if I have spoken the truth, why strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We may not put anyone to death. We may not put anyone to death. This was in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he had said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the Praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. My kingdom is not here. If my kingdom were here, Subjects would be fighting to save me from the ones who hate me. But my kingdom does not belong to this world. So Pilate said to him, So then you Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth, to the truth, to
Pilate said to him, Truth, what does that mean? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Barabbas was a revolutionary. Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you know I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power, the power to release you, and the power to crucify 
Consequently, Peter tried, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king, no king, no king, but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate 
Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of scripture would, might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, After this, aware that everything was now finished in order that scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, Bowing his head, he handed over his spirit. Now since it was the preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of first the one and then the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. 
not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. We have journeys with Jesus today in the reading of our passion. And we continue to journey with our Lord and Savior each day of our lives. Today is the most sacred and solemn day in our church calendar. And yet today we call good, Good Friday always wondered why we use that word. So I went to the dictionary and there it was, 
21 definitions of the word good. Here are but a few. Morally excellent, virtuous, honorable, loving, kind, proper, agreeable, having beneficial effects, genuine. They all fit, don't they? For Good Friday. I really believe that we need to think about and pray about our remembrance of this day, Good Friday. What Jesus has endured for us and all that he has accomplished that the scriptures say, it is finished. We are in awe, aren't we? It's beyond our comprehension. Everything that has been given to us in our lifetime, it's been done by his grace and his love for each of us and especially our redemption. And I hope right now that our hearts are open and that we'll always be grateful for what Jesus has done for us. Today and together, we're spending time around the cross with Jesus as he paid the price for our sins. He did it on a tree. You know, there are certain sites in our world today, those in the Ukraine, in Gaza, in Israel, in Haiti. They're almost too harsh for the human eye to truly see. I remember several years ago when I visited Poland, I toured the Nazi death camp at Auschwitz. At the end, we per proceeded through the muse museum and I saw mountains of human hair, children's shoes, eyeglasses by the thousands, and suitcases. All of these were in glass cases each about the size of a dump truck. Well, I really had a hard time handling it, and I left the tour early. And when I was out of there, I thought, I remember the, the poet Robert Burns saying back in the 1700s, this is truly man's inhumanity to man. But no matter what we've experienced, nothing compares to the crucifixion of Jesus. We've never witnessed it. We weren't there. And it's painful for us to look at it again. But we need to, because it's so easy for us to keep this crucifixion at a safe and antiseptic distance away from our lives. You know, crucifixion was the worst way to die. It's described as the most cruel and horrible. A death that was only handed out to slaves, criminals, and runaways. Now, long before Jesus' time, the Persians had set up this practice when they decided that stoning and hanging and boiling in oil didn't last long enough. The process of crucifixion had it all. It was an agony of pain and physical shock. The nails, the thirst, the insects, it was extremely humiliating, clothes torn off, naked, 
and it was most public. Brutal spectators watching and mocking. It was a punishment because those who saw it were reminded that crime doesn't pay. Research showed that most died within three to six hours. But there is a documented case of a criminal that lasted nine days. Imagine. Crucifixion, the supreme humiliation and torture. So now, try to remove yourself from a gold-plated cross of jewelry that's worn around someone's neck. And instead, think of a gas chamber with screams coming from a distance. Then you have come to the cross where our Prince of Peace died. I'd like to ask you on this Good Friday, when you hit a real brick wall in your life, do you ever think of it as carrying your cross? Carrying your cross for Jesus? Do you offer it up and say to him, thank you, Jesus? Do you ever feel when you hit a crisis that you're closer to Jesus than you've ever been before. Hasn't Jesus said to each of us, in order to be my follower, you must take up your cross every day and follow me? But our humanist tells us that we don't want to have anything to do with trials of a cross in our lives. Today's culture doesn't recognize the cross. Drug and alcohol abuse tries to duck the cross. Denying domestic abuse is to duck the cross. Cheating on income taxes or school tests is to deny the cross. Rationalizing our way out of tricky moral situations or voting our pocketbooks instead of our conscience is to deny the cross. Today teaches us that we might be able to put off the cross. We can walk around the cross. We can duck the cross. But the cross will come back to us. We just can't experience spiritual growth in our lives without facing our cross. Do we really know Jesus who died for us? Have we witnessed his sorrow and his great love? And so today, may our prayer this hour be that God will give us the grace to overcome being like the judging Putchett's Pilate and, be, and, be, uh, and became instead Joseph of Arimathea taking Christ's body as his own. We pray that we won't melt into the crowd of just like the onlookers, but become like Simon of Cyrene, helping Jesus to take up his cross the one that we must carry too. But become like the women of Jerusalem who give Jesus a cloth to wipe his face or a sponge of wine and their loving tears. And we pray that we will have more courage than his own disciples who ran away in fear. We pray on this solemn Good Friday that we won't be builders of crosses, 
but become like angels who roll back the stone and can now give the good news of Christ's resurrection, especially to those in our lives each day that, near, that need to hear of God's love for them. Amen. Please stand, everybody. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her, throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to, the, to, to all nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope you have chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Gregory, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayers for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins,
through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the fount of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united by the bound of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understanding more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every hurtful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of all human race. Through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. God, 
The next part of our liturgy today is the veneration of the cross. The cross was an instrument of torture and suffering. It is the evidence of our guilt of our sinfulness. Yet the church sees the cross as a sign of victory. The cross brings us the gift of forgiveness and mercy through the humility and obedience of Jesus. The cross represents not only Good Friday, but also Easter Sunday. A large wood cross will now be brought in procession. Three times the acclamation will be sung. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Each time this invitation is proclaimed, our response should be, come, let us adore. The cross will be then held for all to venerate. We invite you to come follow, to come follow and make a simple bow of your head or a genuflection before the cross and then return to your seat. We respectfully request that you do not touch the cross. During this solemn time, we ask you to follow the directions of the ushers who will make sure everyone has time to venerate the cross in an orderly and prayerful manner. Please stand as the cross is brought forward in procession. Behold the wood of the cross, at which hang the Savior of the world. Please kneel. stand. Stop. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the Savior of the world.
please stand. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Please kneel. Please be seated. Thank you. 
My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of Egypt, from slavery to freedom. But you led your Savior to the cross. Holy is God. Sanctus Holy and strong. Sanctus Fortis. Holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis. For forty years I led you safely through the desert. I fed you with manna from heaven and brought you to a land of plenty. But you led your Savior to the cross. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis. What more could I have done for you? I planted you as my fairest wife, but you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you your Savior with a lance. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, 
holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis, for your sake I scourge your captors and their firstborn sons. But you brought your scourges down on me. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. <coughs> Holy is God, Sanctus Deus. Holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis. Holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus immortalis, miserere nobis. I led you from slavery to freedom and drowned your captors in the sea. But you handed me over to your high priest. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus. Holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis. Holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus immortalis, miserere nobis. I open the sea before you, but you opened my side with a spear. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud, but you led me to a pilot's court. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, 
Sanctus Deus, holy and strong. Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis, I bore you up with manna in the desert, but you struck me down and scourged me. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis, I gave you a saving water from the rock, but you gave me gall and vinegar to drink. My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis. For you I struck down the kings of Canaan, but you struck my head with a My people, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. Holy is God, Sanctus Deus, holy and strong, Sanctus Fortis, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis, The third part of today's liturgy is Holy Communion. Since there is no Mass today, the deacons will bring the Eucharist consecrated at the Mass of the Last Supper last night. 
we now prepare to receive the Eucharist, the body of Christ. In this sacred sacrament, Jesus gives us the strength to die to our own selfishness and rise to share in his victory over sin. Following communion and the closing prayer, our liturgy will end in silence. <coughs> Please respect that silence as you leave the church today. Please stand, everybody. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Those who trespass against us, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please kneel, everybody. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be.
restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserving us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Uh, bow down for blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people 
who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord.